from MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. I'm Kristen Merkel on the intersection of 15th and Oak in Bozeman, where I talk to a bike commuter and how he stays safe on the roads. And sometimes we all need someone to talk to. Coming up, we visit Cancer Support Community of Montana to talk about their options of folks to sit and talk to. 6.30, Chet Lehman, Matt Elwell with you here on this Wednesday, a lovely morning outside. You can see traffic moving along yeah. nicely there on beautiful. Uh, Montana in uh, the mining city. Yeah, I, this beautiful morning, Gorgeous. the temperatures uh, are chilly. It feels a little fall-ish, but the temperatures are actually no, relatively comfortable for lovely. the morning. Uh, most areas into the 40s at this point in the day. 27 in West Yellowstone, 48 in Livingston. We're sitting at 41 this morning in Ennis. Good morning to you. Mainly dealing with clear skies across the area through the afternoon. That means a lot of sunshine, a pretty quick warm up. Oh, they flipped the lights on at the. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 that happens. Uh, temperatures <laughs> expected to be into the uh, 60s as you head into the afternoon. Mostly sunny skies. Wind speeds between 10 and 20 miles an hour. We're going to take a look at that weekend forecast as we see the temperatures kind of moving up and down the scale. Complete forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Matt. 632 now. It's been a week since the deadly crash that killed Bozeman High School teacher Kelly Fulton. Dan's Jane McDonald recently spoke with the Bozeman Police Department to confirm details of the case and to see what the next steps are. More flowers have been placed at the Kelly Fulton Memorial, a community coming together to grieve and remember a great high school teacher. But many in the community wonder what the next steps are. Just because an immediate arrest is not made doesn't mean that one can't be made later. The investigation continues into the deadly crash on Oak and 15th. Police say Kelly Fulton was riding his bike lawfully through the intersection when a pickup truck ran a red light and hit him. No charges have been filed yet following the death of 40-year-old Kelly Fulton. Uh, we're working through with our attorney's offices to determine what's appropriate charging for this event. And that includes going through witness statements, photographs, and videos. The numerous other witnesses and folks who gave aid, more people stopped than was necessary. And I think it just goes to say the quality of people that we have living here. The Gallatin County Coroner reports that Mr. Fulton died from a brain injury caused by blunt force trauma. Bozeman police confirmed that Mr. Fulton was wearing a helmet. Captain Swanson says if you'd like to give a statement or if you had dash cam footage or any other pieces of evidence to contact the non-emergency line for the Bozeman Police Department. In Bozeman, Jane McDonald, MTN News. Now following that tragic death of Bozeman High teacher Kelly Fulton, cyclists around Bozeman are now questioning their safety. Dean's Kristen Merkel with uh, why defensive cycling is so important. I'm here at the intersection of 15th and Oak where a Bozeman High teacher was fatally struck. What this means for the safety of the cycling community and why defensive biking is so important. I live outside of town now and there's no safe road really for me to ride to get into town. Local mountain biker James Erickson says he stays off the roads while biking in Bozeman. You know, traffic is going 55 miles an hour on those roads and there's no shoulder or anything. Manager of Owen House Cycling, Tom Johnson, has been commuting on his bike for 25 years and says the traffic on roads has changed. Pay attention. Um, Bozeman's obviously gotten a lot busier. Traffic has picked up a lot. We got a lot of out-of-staters. He also emphasizes the importance of wearing a helmet while riding around town. I wear a helmet every day. And so people, even though they're just in town doing 10 miles an hour or whatever that number is, they don't wear a helmet, but one thing they kind of they kind of forget about is fit. The helmet can only do as much as it can on a, on the appropriate fit. Johnson says defensive cycling is vitally important because drivers can be unpredictable. Stop lights, stop signs. Don't assume they're going to stop. I always play defensively or ride defensively and and almost delay before I walk across the street. He also wants people to know that regular bicycles are not the only thing to look out for when driving and that electric bikes can be very deceiving. Well, you as a driver, you see a biker, everything's in reference point to the old bike category. But now as you have the e-biker, don't assume he's just pedaling at eight. He can cover that distance a lot quicker. And bikers like Erickson are definitely rethinking where they should bike following the tragic death of Kelly Fulton. That's the scary part is on that road, right? It, the speed is so fast that if somebody doesn't see you, you know, it, the, the chance of losing your life is, is so much higher. In Bozeman, Kristen Merkel, MTN News. All right, 635 now. A cancer diagnosis often brings up more questions than answers for that person and for all those around them. 
This morning we continue our series of stories focusing on some of Cancer Support Community's free programs by looking at some of the counseling programs that are available for every member of the family and support system. This is the garden in front of the Cancer Support Community of Montana offices here in Bozeman. It's a great place to walk around and look at the vegetables, the flowers, herbs that have been grown by people here as part of their therapy. It's a great place to come and sit as well. And the beautiful thing about Cancer Support Community of Montana is if you want to, you don't have to sit alone. I was going through major emotions, you know, happy, sad, angry, scared, and so was the other person. I was worried about asking the wrong questions or probing in areas that might hurt that person. And why would you wanna hurt somebody if you're anybody like me? I don't wanna cause any kind of pain. So what do I say, what do I do, who do I go to to even find out how to go about this? And when I found out about this place, it was heaven sent. The folks here at Cancer Support Community understand all those worries. From the people who've been diagnosed with cancer to those who love them. Many of the people at CSC get it because they've been there themselves. And I remember when I was diagnosed, it was like information overload. Um, it's, it wasn't a shortage of information, but it wasn't necessarily um, all helpful information. And it was so hard to like sort through. Think of a cancer diagnosis as a freeway entrance. Doctor's terminology, financial worries, thoughts of the future, family and what will happen, all racing by you as you try to navigate onto this new roadway. I think a cancer support community is a much needed rest area, a place to simply stop for a moment or two and try to gather some of those thoughts. You're going to have to get back on that highway, but for a little bit here, you can take a break. You know, a lot of times when you go to these initial appointments, you have gosh, 15 minutes, maybe 30 minutes to sit there and talk about like the most uh, important thing that's ever happened to you. And um, so this place is great because you get to come in and spend as much time as you want to. Um, it's such a comfortable space and you know, you can spend an hour or even two if you need to just like talking through and kind of, yeah, getting your bearings. Pat came here because of a family member's diagnosis. She'll say it was the best decision she's made. Don't be afraid or be afraid, but walk in. Take that step to walk in because you will be amazed what's on the other side of that door and what will, how they will help you. Now, if you talk to most people who've been diagnosed with cancer, they will tell you cancer be, can become all consuming and they sometimes just don't want to talk about it. Tomorrow, we continue our series looking at some of the free programs at Cancer Support Community, including regular opportunities to gather to not necessarily talk about cancer. All right, time for a break here on Montana This Morning.